Hello, everyone, and welcome to High Level Listening. I'm Kat, your American English teacher for this intermediate vocabulary class. So welcome. Today's vocabulary class is talking about vocabulary in the car. In the car. So let's go ahead and get started. Here we go. Our first vocabulary phrase, get in the car. Get in the car. Get in the car. Get in the car. So when we enter the car, we say, get in the car. Get in the car. Come on, get in the car. Let's get in the car. He gets in the car. She gets in the car. We get in the car. Time to go. Let's get in the car. Time to go. Time to go. Come on, come on. Time to go. Let's get in the car. Let's get in the car. Time to go. Let's get in the car. Come on. Let's get in the car. Come on, we're going to be late. Let's get in the car. Very important in the car, your seat belt. Seat belt. When we say it quickly, seat belt. We kind of lose the T a little bit. Seat belt. Seat belt. Now, seat belt has a lot of verbs, okay? The easiest one, pretend it's like some clothing. Pretend it's like clothes. Put on your seat belt. Put on your t-shirt. Put on your shoes. It's the same. Put on your seat belt. I put on my seat belt. I get in the car and I put on my seatbelt. The next one that's very common, buckle. Buckle your seatbelt. To buckle is to connect together. Buckle. Buckle your seatbelt and buckle your belt. So we use the same verb there. Put on your seatbelt, buckle your seatbelt. Now, one you might hear on an airplane or a public bus or in a transit system, fasten your seatbelt. Fasten your seatbelt. Fasten is the same. Connect. Connect the pieces. Fasten your seatbelts. We probably use put on your seatbelt and buckle your seatbelt most often at home. My mom tells me. Buckle your seatbelt. Put on your seatbelt. But in an airplane, when we're traveling, the, the flight attendant says, fasten your seatbelts. Fasten your seatbelts. But these all mean the same thing. Now, sometimes you'll hear the phrase, buckle up. Buckle up. Now, is it buckle or buckle up? If you are driving on a road trip in the United States, you might see a sign on the freeway, on the highway that says, buckle up. And you see a picture of a seatbelt. Buckle up. Now, when you buckle your seatbelt, you are connecting the pieces. If you buckle up, you are 100% connected. You are 100% buckled up. Buckled up. That means you don't just buckle, but you buckle completely. Buckle up. Buckle up. It's very common in American English and English in general to add little tiny words. This is a good example of it. Buckle your seatbelt. Buckle up, please. Buckle up, please. Now, you Put on your seatbelt and you are connected. You are, just like clothes, 
wearing your seatbelt in the car after you connect your seatbelt, after you buckle up, you are wearing your seatbelt, just like clothes. I put on my shirt, and now I'm wearing my shirt. I put on my shirt, and now I am wearing my shirt. You are wearing your seatbelt. Is everybody wearing their seatbelts? Okay, good, good. We also use this, are you buckled up? Are you buckled up? Oh no, sorry, I forgot. Okay, I put on my seatbelt. Yes, I am buckled up. I am buckled up. That means I'm fully 100% connected. I'm buckled up. Please wear your seatbelt. Yes, ma'am, sorry. Yes, I'm buckled up. Yes, I'm buckled up. Everyone, please put on your seatbelts. Everyone, please fasten your seatbelts. Everyone, please buckle your seatbelts. So you can use whatever verb you like. Put on your seatbelts, buckle your seatbelts, or if we're in an airplane and you hear from the flight attendant, Fasten your seatbelts. Fasten your seatbelts. Okay, now most kids in the car don't sit in the front seat. They sit in the back seat. So we have the front seat and the back seat. When we are in the car, we are riding in the car. So we get in the car, we put on our seatbelts, and now we are riding in the car. Riding in the back seat. We are riding, riding in the car. Mom and dad are driving, and the kids in the back seat are riding in the car. Riding in the back seat. Back seat. Back seat, front seat, front seat, ride in the car, ride in the car, ride in the car. My sons are riding in the back seat wearing their seat belts, very safe, protected. My sons are riding in the back seat wearing their seat belts. So right now, my kids, my sons, my two boys are riding in the back seat. The driver is driving. The other people, the passengers, are riding. My sons are riding in the back seat, wearing their seat belts. Good, nice and safe. Now, for very little kids or even babies, they don't have a seat belt. They have a special car seat. Car seat. Now, we change the verb just a little. We keep buckle, but we buckle into the car seat because we really are sitting in the seat, so we are buckled into the car seat. Car seat is for as a special, special piece, just for babies, just for little kids, a car seat. It's not the normal seat in the car. It's a special piece called the car seat. And we buckle the baby in to the car seat. We buckle our children into the car seat. So we change the word just a little bit. Buckle your seat belt. Buckle your seat belt. Buckle the baby into the car seat. So we have an extra word there. 
Let's buckle you into your car seat. So if you are talking to your baby, if you are talking to your kid, if you're talking to your child, you say, okay, let's buckle you into your car seat. Let's buckle you into your car seat. Okay, are you all buckled up? That means we are 100% connected. Connected here, connected down at the bottom. Yes, I'm all buckled up. I'm all buckled up. That means 100% I'm all connected. Now, this is probably the easiest word in our list today. We drive the car. Usually there is only one driver in the car. They sit in the driver's seat. They are the driver. So the person, like this mom, she's the driver. She's the driver. She drives the car. Now listen to the pronunciation, D-R. D-R is not dura, dura, no. We push it together, j, driver. It sounds like a J. When the D and R in English come together, it sounds like a J. J, dry, driver. That V sound, make sure your teeth are touching your lip and you feel it in your throat. J. Driver. Driver. So it's a simple word, but there's a lot of good ways to pronounce it. And we need to pronounce it correctly. J. Ri. Ver. Driver. Drive the car. Drive the car. Since we're talking about pronunciation, let's practice car. With the A-R sound, we need to open our mouth and drop our jaw. Car. Because it's not cur, it's car. Car. Drive the car. Driver. All right, good, good. Practicing your speaking. Now, the driver controls the car, and the driver uses a gear stick, a gear stick. So you can see the person's hand is on the gear stick. Now, in most cars, we have a manual car or an automatic car. This is when we shift or change gears. First gear, second gear, third gear, fourth gear. But some cars are very simple, so we call it a shifter for automatic cars. A shifter for automatic cars or a gear stick is very common for manual cars. Whichever car you have, you can usually call it a shifter. No problem. A shifter. Now, to shift is to change. To shift is to change. And the gear stick is the knob or the piece. Gear stick, shifter. Change gears. Change gears. Now, very easily and very common, when we change the gears or we use the shifter, really easy, we put it in. We put the car in drive. Put it in drive. That means drive goes forward. Put it in reverse, the big R. Put it in reverse. Reverse goes back. Drive goes forward. Reverse goes back. Put it in park. Put it in park. Put it in park. Put it in park means that we are stopped and we put the car in park to turn it off. 
Now, if you have a manual car, you put the car in first gear, second gear, third gear, fourth gear? Is there fifth gear? I can't remember. Put it in first gear, second gear, third gear, fourth gear, fifth gear. If you have a special car, sixth gear. So put it in drive. That means the car. Put the car in drive. Put the shifter in drive. Put it in drive. Put it in reverse. Going back. Put it in park. Put it in first gear. Put it in second gear. Put it in third gear. Third gear. And put it in fourth gear. All right, very good. Now it's time to stop the car. We want to put it in park and find a parking lot, very big parking space just for my car. I want to park my car in the big parking lot in a smaller parking space. Let's park the car. Parking lot, big place. Parking space, one space for one car. Park the car. Park the car in the parking space, in the parking lot. Lot, space, park the car. Let's find a parking lot to park in. Now, when we want to find a parking space, we go in the parking lot. So let's find a parking lot, the big area, to park in, in the parking lot. Because we have a space, we park in the space. In the parking lot, in the parking space. Let's find a parking lot to park in. Let's find a parking lot to park in. Park in. Park in. Oh, look, there's an open parking space. Oh, look, there's an open parking space. That means there's no cars in the space. It's open. There's an open parking space. That means that we can go into the space. We can park in the space. Oh, look, there's an open parking space. Okay, we found a parking lot. We parked in a parking space. I put it in park. I turned off the car. Now it's time to get out of the car. Remember at the beginning of the lesson, we said get in the car. Now it's time to get out of the car. 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 Of the car. Okay, everyone, get out of the car. Get out of the car. Hmm, is it go in the car or get in the car? And why? We use the verb get in the car very commonly in American English. Get in the car. Get in the car is to move your body and place yourselves. Get in the car. Move your body. Place your body into the car. Get in the car. If someone says, go in the car and get my purse. Go in the car and get my purse. Now, I am going into the car, but I'm not placing my body in the car. I'm not sitting down. I'm just looking in the car, opening the door, putting my head in, and oh, I see the purse. 
grab the purse and go. But get in the car means I move my body and sit down. So that's a little bit of the difference between go in the car or get in the car. If you are driving from one place to another, we almost always say get in the car. Get in the car. So I hope that helps with why do we say get in the car or get out of the car? It's moving your body, moving your body and sitting in the car, moving your body and removing yourself from the car. Get in the car, get out of the car. Lots of driving today. We are here. We're here. Let's get out of the car. We're here. Let's get out of the car. So to exit the car, we get out of the car. Get out of the car. Enter the car. Get in the car. This is very common. Exit the car. Get out of the car. Get out of the car. All right, let's practice everything that we learned today. Get in the car. Get in the car. Put on your seatbelt. Put on your seatbelt. Put it in drive. Put it in drive. Drive the car. Drive the car. Look for a parking space. Look for a parking space. Look for a parking space. Park the car. Park the car. Unbuckle. Put it on. Take it off. Buckle. Unbuckle. Unbuckle your seatbelt. Unbuckle your seatbelt. Get out of the car. 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 We're here. Wow, great job today, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for our class today. I'm so happy to see you. I'm so happy to have you here in class. Thank you so much for all the comments and messages. I really do appreciate it. Thank you for studying with us, and I will see you soon for our next intermediate vocabulary class. Thank you, everybody. See you very soon.